What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to Double Coverage. We hope you're still living, loving, and breathing sport. I am Dom with the Great Man Source and special guest for the second time now on our show, Shano, uh, Sports Cards 23. That is Cards with a Z 23. Shano, how you going? Saucy, how you going? Good, mate. Good, mate. I'm good, mate. I'm uh, I'm doing well. I'm probably not as well as you, mate, after uh, last night's reports, mate. After last yeah. night's reports, uh, you're a happy man. You weren't happy 48 hours ago. Let me just tell you that. You were you were in the dumps. You were in the sours, mate. You I was, was never uh... in the dumps, mate. I never doubted my <laughs> football club. I never doubted CR7. I never doubted myself. <laughs> I never doubted anything. I, all I said was great things. You can go back in those chats. Uh, flattering words is all I could put source. But yes, uh, for listeners, if you go watch this, I've got the biggest smile on my face. You've caught me in the best mood ever, I reckon, <laughs> that you're ever going to get. Uh, but happy to be here. Happy to have Shano on. We've got a lot to get through. Uh, some big things obviously been happening in the hobby. Uh, we're not going to do the whole spiel in this podcast of Hi, Shane. How you going? Where are you from? How'd you get into the hobby? We have interviewed Shane once before. He gave that whole spiel. That interview was awesome. So definitely go back and have a listen to that. So we're going to start with, Shane, what have you bought recently? Um, recently? Oof, mate. Um, I've been into getting into my, a lot of hockey. Um, I just see it as... There's a lot of, I just, I just, you know, being Aussie, I didn't grow up with hockey, right? Uh, you guys are the same. Um, ice hockey, NHL, wasn't really existent to us growing up, right? Um, you might have had to be lucky to have one ice rink in each city <laughs> across Australia, right? Um, but then yeah, no, I love hockey uh, since moving to Canada and, um, yeah, I just see. I love Gretzky. I love. I've been watching some of his, you know, some old games and highlights, and I love it, right? Because you can really tell that he he's he's the goat. He um he's just he's a classic, and uh, so I like. I've been collecting a bit of Gretzky, to be honest. Any cards in particular? Um. Yeah. Um. I've got. Oh man, I picked up a. So it's called Sign of the Two Times, and it's Gretzky. He's signed it the card twice, um, one being in an Oilers jersey and one being in a Team Canada jersey on the same card, obviously, Sign of the Times. And that's one of my favourite auto cards to get is Sign of the Times. I think they're just classics. Um, but, yeah, it's him. He's signed it twice, and it's super rare. So 2011, um, 2011, 2012 um, SP. Oh, yeah. And um, it's super rare, but it's just unique, man. I've never seen a card like that, right? Imagine if I saw a Jordan card like that. Oh, like one yeah. in a Team USA and one in a Bulls. That would be unreal, wouldn't it? Oh, bro. Imagine. Could you imagine that? Like, seriously, like. Two autos is better than one, I say. I reckon too, man. Like, and, um, it's signed with one, like a different, like a Sharpie, like a fatty, and then with a, like a nice little felt pen. So it's different pens, right? Um, I like that. And I've got a, a, a Gretzky McDavid jewel as well. Nice. Um, a Lemieux Gretzky jewel. Um, so I've got to send a couple off for grading, but we'll see how they go. You've been collecting hoppy, hockey, you say. Is there anyone like that's currently playing that you've you've you know gravitated towards or picked up any cards out of current current crop, or you're just sticking more to Gretzky and the goats or players that have passed and and you know achieved what 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 there is all to achieve in the NHL? Um, definitely the goats. Uh, I always will do that. So there's a couple other players I want to get into is Bobby Orr. And um, Gordy Howe um, and Lemieux, more a bit more Lemieux. They're just 
legends. Just, just legends of the game, right? So this is this is really good for listeners out there. If you're not familiar with hockey and maybe you want to dabble in there and you want to go straight to the top, you want to talk about guys that have, you know, you're talking about, if we're talking basketball ter- terms, you're talking about the Bill Russells, the, you know, the Magics, the, the, the LeBrons, the Jordans of, of the sport. Um, you know, there's some names for you to go do a bit of research. As we say on this show, the number one uh, thing is to do a bit of research. So obviously everyone knows Gretzky, but then some of those other names, go out there and, and see what they've achieved. You know, it's quite easy to find this information online. And um, yeah, it's yeah, that's interesting, Shane. I, I, there's a lot of people out there that have started to, you know, talk about hockey. And, you know, this is how it all starts. You know, it started with tennis. People talk about tennis and then you freaking look at tennis cards. They're, they're gone bananas, right? Yeah. And this is how this is how it starts, you know. So if you if you think about something before the mainstream gets onto it, this is where you want to be buying those cards because when it does get fire, it can uh, take off quick. And, you know, within, within a four to six-week period, those cards go up astronomical values. So, uh, and then I'll tell you what, they don't go back down to that same price point ever again. They sort of just sit up above that uh, that price, you know, not not like up to their all-time highs, but they come down, but they never go back down that cheap. So, yeah, um, yeah it's definitely a time to, to look at some of this stuff, which is good, good stuff. Yep. yep. For sure. I like that. I do like it. I've heard Gordy Howe's name a fair bit. I, I remember looking at Gordy Howe, when a lot of that um, Gretzky or Peachy stuff was coming out in the hobby a few years back, and I'm pretty sure he did he pass away yeah, between bro. like yeah uh, young or something or there's there's another thing right there man like and you know he signed a bit but not that much yeah like, he's not here and he's that that he's a yeah absolute legend in the game. So that's the other thing as well like the rarity of his autos they're very scarce like. If, if they ever wanted to be another release, they can just go get Gretzky to sign. Um, but Gordy Howe is pretty much, unfortunately, rest his soul. He's done and like done and dusted in the signing space, and that whatever's out there, that's that's what it is. Yeah. So definitely have a look, do your research. Shane has dropped some gems there, some absolute gems. Uh, yep. Thoughts on the hobby health, Shane? Um, mate, it's it's doing good, I think. Um, rare stuff is kicking ass um and like you know like uh you know high grade goat cards man you look at look at um pwcc premier auctions and goldens heritage man they're all um leylands they're man they're all doing they're picking up some big numbers for these cards man um boys so i i um yeah I think it's pretty healthy, to be honest. I think some of the, I think people are catching on to, you know, like lower end stuff of all the, you know, 1920, 1890 stuff, you know, Tatum year and all that. It, people are picking up that that's, yeah, they, they're they like going down a little bit in price, I think, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, we're in a space in this hobby that we're what? A couple of months ago, everyone said, "Oh, it's it's going to crash and it's finished and no. we're done." And so many things have happened in the last few months, and it's just gone gangbusters. But your Quite thoughts? Crazy. Go, yeah, it's been insane. It's been insane. Uh, obviously, we've had a little bit of drama in a few sections of the hobby. I just wanted to get your take uh, because you use eBay, uh, PWCC, and eBay obviously splitting. Yeah, just your thoughts on it. And- um. Well, it sucks for someone like me <laughs> um, because, you know, I had cards in the vault um, listed on eBay, blah, blah, blah. Um, and now, obviously, they're, you know, they're off grid for the <laughs> for the time being. Um, but uh, I think, you know what I think it stems from is because PWCC were doing that, uh, doing their premier auction on their own without eBay. Um, and I think it, that's where it started um, because obviously that's where all the big numbers are coming in and um, eBay would have been like, hey, why aren't you using us for this, blah, 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 and then there's some sort of internal fallout um, there, right? Um, that's what I think. That's my take on it because... Now, 
yeah. you've used them a bit, PWCC, and from your experience, how have they been as a company? Uh, you know, just service wise and and things. Okay, so when I okay a few years back, so this is when I first really started getting back into it, right? Um, I had a shit ton of cards, slabs, um, and I needed money, so I was like, oh. All right, I'm going to use this. Uh, I did a bit of research and I heard of PWCC. And um, anyway, I used them. Um, and they, everything they've done has always been legit and just very good. But um, when I, the first time I used them, I made some cards, like if they were to sell now, they would be selling like for 20 times, right? Like I saw some cards, some Kobe autos, like, uh flawless autos golds that was sold for like 280 dollars us um and like now they you know people are charging 20 grand for them so but anyway so that was then but now i've had uh i use them all the time there and nothing but class that's all i can say interesting that's a different take it's good to have so yes yeah. Very good to have. Yeah, look, look, you can only speak from your own personal experience, man. So that's that's why I asked. I've never used PWCC. I've bought a shitload off them yep. and never never had issues. Um, you know, uh, it's been, you know, it, it, everything's been pretty good. Um, you know, people talk about the whole shilling thing and it's so, it's so look, it's difficult to prove. eBay still haven't come out and said, hey, here's the evidence that it was happening. Like, yeah. so how do you even believe it? You know, there's a lot of innuendo about the between the two companies. And, and as you said, the rift of uh, obviously them not using them for the premium auction. And, you know, eBay is not happy that they're not getting their cut, I guess. So it's, it's, it's tough to point but, the finger and go and say that. And there's, and there's, other than just PWCC, like just your average auctions on there, they get shielded anyway. Like it's, yeah. it happens everywhere. So it's not just – you can't just point out one in particular, just one party, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I think it was a bit unfair. I Look, I think it was a bit unfair and probably considering how PwC has followed up and been on a number of podcasts and, and got on the front foot and eBay's just there going, oh, well, we're, we're the big uh, billion, massive billion-dollar company. Uh, yep. We don't need to do prove shit. That's pretty much what I'm getting from eBay. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, it, it's hard to say that. I think eBay fucked up here because, um, yeah, they look, guaranteed there's been some insider trading shilling sort of schemes probably from all these companies. Fucking Rick fucking Pustine, number one, mate. He started it, right? And, um, and guaranteed PWCC, they've probably had some stuff for sure. And then all the private stuff, man eBay and they benefit from it. So what the hell? What are they what's their problem? You know what I mean? If something gets spiked up more, the more they get in fees, right? Like it's I don't get it. Yeah, that that was the the one questionable thing that we said as well like wouldn't you just let the auction end first if you wanted to part ways with them? Just take all the fees and then just say listen, you know, we want to go separate ways and yeah, there's some. I'm, I'm with I'm with you, Shano. But I think right. We, I don't think everyone is getting the full gist of it. Um, I, I, I'm with you because not for anything like you said, like you said as well. Source happens on all different auction houses that are on there, like whether yeah. it's Probstein's or it was PWCC, even just a normal person listing a card. So it it always happens across the board on that on that platform. It's single out. It's a single out PWCC. I don't know. It's interesting. We'll never, honestly, we'll never know the truth to this. No, nah. I, I think PWCC is better off just doing their own thing, like Goldens. Anyway, they they they're like they're probably they're as big, if not bigger. Um, so I think just do your own thing. <laughs> They'll be fine. 100%. They will be. Hundred percent. Uh, sales that you've had through auction houses uh is it just have you just sold through pwcc has there been any others that you've used and the type of cards that you've sold uh you can and cannot get into them if you want to but that's that's up to you mate. yeah man i um i've used only used i've only used pwcc and um but i've had recently i had a card go on the premier auction um and did quite well. It was a record-breaking price for that card. 
and it was i have to say it was pretty damn exciting hey eh? just like just because it for two, it, the, the auction goes for two weeks and for you know for 13 days it just sat at this like low price you know what i mean it was a lebron uh it was a what was it yes yeah, 2005 six sp dual significance mj lebron dual auto uh bgs 9 10 auto fucking beautiful card i purchased it from perth uh from a card store in perth back in 2000 and oh what have been 2008 i'd say um for a very back then it was a lot of money but uh, yeah it was a, I, I paid a bit for it and then uh, and back then people would have been going, why would you buy pay that much money for a piece of cardboard you're an idiot mate you're an absolute idiot all right <laughs> so many people said that so many people right and then um obviously i held it for a long time so let it go in you know 21 so it was i've had it for at least 13 14 years Anyway, put in uh, Jesse from um, PWCC uh, knew I was sort of thinking about getting rid of it, and um, he messaged me saying, "Hey, do you want to put it in the premier auction?" I'm like, "You know, do you think it'll do well?" He's like, "Yes, I, th- I do," because the autos were perfect on it, boys. Ah, oh, like, like they just did it. Like it was so perfect. I'm very fussy on my auto. But um, yeah, he uh, he's like, yeah, it'll do well, and uh, yeah, it got it made sixty six k US. But the instead extended bidding was awesome because that's where obviously you place your bid right, and then um, you wait until extended bidding, and that's when the the big bids come along, right? So it was fun to watch. Love that it! Been Congratulations, insane. mate! Congratulations, Congrats, man. Yeah, of course. Good. That's why, hey, it's what I get my family, uh, you know, that's what I've got to do, man. I like it. You got, is there anything else that you plan on putting in a, an upcoming auction? Uh, Any big cards? Yeah, uh, right now. So when you asked if I'd bought something, so I, the, I've just did buy something and it's, I think, a huge card. Like, to me it is. And I think when everyone catches on. So I, I believe MJ's the GOAT in basketball to me. So any any rookie card of his, so being the XRC 101 star, which is his true rookie, if you can get an auto of that, Jesus, mate, happy days. If That's you, the 85. It was in 85, not 86, right, the card? 84, 85. Yeah, 84, so, 85. There you go. Yeah, that's his first true rookie and then there's his second year which is 85 86 117 star um and then um then there's the fleer so the fleer and then i like the fleer sticker that's i love that card i just love it so yeah i've picked up an autographed uh fleer sticker um i just purchased put a deposit on it and i'll, I'll be getting it in the next week or so wow that's awesome. I have two of really? them. So I'll be, uh, yeah. I'm now, pretty- were, were, were those like signed when they were done or is that like, you know, he's he's signed them after someone's, you know, got him at a si- signing and, and he's whacked his signature on there. Is that right? All at flight camps. There you okay. go. So you can't get, so, okay. So Jordan rookies, Fleer rookies, the only um, autographed, MJ card that came out of a pack, Fleer Rookie, was a buyback version, and there was only 23 made. If you can get one of them, oh, man. Like, that's like the Mona Lisa of rookie cards in basketball, um, in my opinion. And then uh, and then you get the ones that were signed at flight, clamp, flight camps and uh, wherever else he signed, right? Um, and same as the stickers. So... There's no there's no buyback version of the stickers to my knowledge. Um, so yeah, just to have them, I, I believe there's massive upside to them. That's Love unique. It. That's it's what good. we always say: unique pieces. Uh, do you know what the pop is on those on those stickers? If yeah, you were to... less than thirty of BGS and PSA. Wow. Yeah. There you go. And Rarity. Very similar. 
I think it might be 60 for the actual number 57, Fleer. Yeah, so it's less for the sticker. Um, wow. So, yeah, and uh, to get a 10 auto is huge. So, yeah, I've got two that have 10 autos. Interesting. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, the next one, I remember in our first discussion, our first discussion, obviously, uh, we asked you about some grading. All right. And I'm going to ask you about it again because you're a BGS man, mm -hmm. is what you said to us. Has anything changed in the, I think it's been about six months since we sat down. Has anything changed since then? Is Because uh, we've seen a lot of flack go BGS's way yeah. in that time period. Uh, they really haven't, in our opinion, done anything to really help themselves. Well, they've closed their doors. Uh, to certain uh, levels of submission. The same with PSA. Yeah. But just your thoughts on the whole scheme of things of where do you think BGS should go? Do you think they're the way to keep grading? Do you Have you jumped ship to PSA? Hell no. Thoughts on it? I'm always BGS, but they are so old school. Like, like they run – they they're – they sort of, that's why probably why I like them because they keep <laughs> they keep I don't know now nah, I just like I like I like BGS always will um, to me like when I was collecting back even in the two thousands and that um, and even ten man, BGS was always the preferred so and then oh, man, I just I've had a couple subs I put them in at the same time in January. Um, I got my BGS back already. My PSA still is in, oh, what is it? Research and something. Identification and research or something. It's been sitting there for like, yeah, for six months. Hasn't moved. So I don't know, man. I, I know PSA is still the preferred, but um, for me, I'm happy like to get a, you know, if I had a choice of a PSA 10 MJ rookie and a BGS 9.5, I'm going to go by eye appeal because to me, they both mean the same. That's fair enough. Yeah. It, Source's famous quote is you're paying for the card in the, in the end of the day, not for the slab. So, Yeah, but everyone wants the slab, man. I know. That's the thing. That's that, the thing. Everyone wants that gold label BGS. You don't want the silver, right? Like, And same... True. PSA, you want the ten, not the not the nine. Everyone wants a PSA ten. And hey, it's boys the grading on both both. Okay, so I just my BGS sub that came back, I submitted fourteen cards. So by my eye appeal, I thought they were mint to gem mint. Every single card, I was I wouldn't bother sending them in, sending them in. I got one gem mint. The rest. I got like two nines and the rest were eight fives. So I know my PSA sub, when I get that back, I'll probably be looking at sevens, eights. Wow. Nines if I'm lucky. <laughs> so anyway. Would you would you consider subbing with HGA? Nah. Oh, oh, man. They did my head in. Like I tried to do a couple subs. So... My boy Esso, he's with Bliss, Bliss and Esso, right? Yeah. Mad Max there. He, uh, I was gonna do some stuff for his, some of his cards, and I was gonna do HGA, and I've got some cards that I would have liked to send there because I like, I like the, you know, the slab that they come in and the labels that they, you know, the color. Yeah. The co yeah. Yeah. Right. So I've got some stuff I want to send in. Anyway, that didn't. Um, you got to line up. There was a queue. So I would be waiting for like an hour in this queue on their website, on their page, and then then I'd be like, oh, no, you've, you've run. You're like, you you didn't. You, you got to try now, Shane. You got to try again because they've increased their limits. There's no there's no queue. Yeah. That, there's no queue. And so you should be able to get in there. I can even have a look here while we're, while we're on, while we're going no. to the next thing. We'll come back to it. I did hear that in the last week or so. so. Yeah. So, and, and things don't, they haven't been, I think they accept about 18,000 cards a week. So, and you know, that's a I, lot. every time I, fuck. It, it's, I mean, that's a lot of cards, but in comparison to what PSA was accepting oh. a week, probably 300,000 or something. That's why they've got still 15 million in backlog. The money is serious, boys. Like, Massive. Yeah. yeah, it's huge. Massive. But 
yeah, definitely, definitely have a look again because they've increased their limits massively, and they've even opened up to group subs where where uh, yours truly uh, will uh, be running one, hopefully for the for the people here down under. Uh, yeah. So, um, I, yeah, I the look of them, they look. I, I like them. Look, I think everyone's going to have a different perspective on them, Shane, when they come out and show their inner workings of how their technology works. They are they are grading with a network software. I can't remember the exact name that the CEO used, but he he did mention it on, on a podcast where he was on Luca Togger's Bronze podcast, uh, the latest one of their latest ones. And the reason why they couldn't release this information earlier was because you know, some of the, the the software and coding that they were using was from other projects. And yep. because it's uh, been patented, they can't actually use it in the same way. So they had to employ a whole bunch of coders to rewrite the code so it looks different to their code so that they actually don't get sued uh, or else they're going to be in big shit. Uh, yep. So so that's part of the reason why they haven't been able to show people how it all works. But I think once that comes out and people see – their process of what they're doing because they're very much like BGS. They don't just give out tens willy nilly. Yeah. Like a lot of their stuff is nines, nine fives, eight fives, a lot of that. Right. But when you get a 10 and it goes to market, it freaking outsells SGC. It gets cl- very, very close to PSA. And, and even some of them are outselling PSA tens yeah. and BGS nine fives. It's killing BGS nine fives at market. Right. Yeah. So, you know, it, it just, shows that they they actually care about the grading, not just trying to get your business back, which is I feel how PSA got the market in the beginning. They were just trying to get the market by giving out too many tens. And then a lot of people in the hobby and massive people who have subbed thousands of thousands of cards a week are saying, you know, it's not the same grading standards. But according to the CEO, uh, Mr. Turner, uh, who's in charge there, <laughs> It's uh, it hasn't changed one bit, which is I find it hard to believe. You know, you're pretty much yeah. saying that all these people that sub five thousand plus cards a week are lying, yeah. Like, uh, oh. and there's not just one person that's saying that. Yeah, no, they're not. There's definitely <laughs> they've, they've he's he's gone in there taking the fucking tree, and yeah, there's some stuff changed for sure. Hundred percent. Well, we'll see what happens with them. They're holding up he's pretty good. well, which is good. tens, but. <laughs> Oh PSA. Uh no. when are they when, when do you reckon they're gonna open their doors? Christmas? Christmas 2024, mate. <laughs> they're struggling to get that backlog sorted. Uh <laughs> other big news, other big news in the hobby. Fanatics obviously came out and they're taken over. We thought it was well, we didn't know what the timeline was on NBA and NFL. It was initially baseball and then since that initial announcement, they've done the full takeover. They're going to be really taking over uh, baseball, basketball, and NFL. Uh, just your thoughts on where you see Tops and Panini and potentially could there be the rebirth of Upper Deck? Oh. Uh, so, yeah, you're, just your thoughts on it all because it's oh, pretty interesting. I hope NHL hang on to that and Upper Deck can hang on to NHL. <sighs> but... um. Yeah, nah. Well, I'm not a fan of Panini anyway, to be honest. I think all this shit's garbage anyway. Um, to be honest, it, it's not it's not that good, man. Like, I, I've, you know what's good? Prism Golds um, and your true RPAs that are game worn. They, yeah, they're they're good. But other than that. It, I don't know. I, I, I'm not too impressed with Panini from what they did with pricing and all that sort of stuff. But um, I'm a, I love Upper Deck and I love I love the old Fleers, Skybox, um, all that stuff. But, yeah, when Panini come in, they just make – there's too many products, I think, in my opinion. But um, I'm, I think it might be good to see something different you still got a few more years of Panini, so soak it up and then... Um, yeah, get ready for 100 sets uh, per year now because they're going to milk the cow. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, now we got to... <laughs> we already thought it was uh, junk wax. Now look <laughs> up, look out. You better watch out. Now we're going to get nah, RPAs, look- buddy. I think, I think it's a good thing. You know, you spoke about game-worn. What you got to remember, Fanatics is like the biggest memorabilia 
in the space. So talk about uh, being able to actually get jerseys and get that memorabilia and get those licenses to get game-worn stuff. I mean, there's none better. Let's be honest, right? Oh, oh, for sure. And and it's NBA owners are a part of it too, right? So there's more money involved with Fanatics, so they're going to get shit done. It's just, you know, whether we like their products, I suppose. That's exactly right. That's... My my interesting take on it was because, like Saul said, Fanatics has that um, that connection with jerseys and game, well, memorabilia. I do think potentially in their high end product, Fanatics, when they go to to release that, we could be getting RPAs or patch autos, but the patches in the patch autos are of significance. Like you could get a Luka Doncic patch patch auto. And then the back says this patch is from the jersey worn by Luka Doncic in this game on this date where he dropped 50 something points. And that's how it should be. That would literally, honestly, if they took that and yep. ran with it, it'd be honestly game over. Just imagine getting pieces of, of tops or like whether it's, well, they haven't got soccer yet. They will get soccer. I'm putting it out there. They will get soccer eventually because they've already got a massive memorabilia deal with the soccer market. Mm-hmm. Uh, just imagine getting a, a, a jersey or a NFL like patch from Tom Brady, and it's like this is the Super Bowl winning, like the top you wore in the Super Bowl winning drive, or whatever it is. Just anything. No, it'd no. just be unbelievable. I, I, it literally would be crazy. Yeah, I think so too, man. I, I actually look forward to it because call me a hater or whatever. I'm just not happy with Panini, like. It's just, yeah, it's not not the only one, mate. There's a lot of lot of stuff out there. I, I I can't justify the prices people are paying for the NT stuff right now. It's oh, coming out with these rookies where they've literally they've literally gone to they've literally gone to uh, uh, Savers and got a youth jersey off the rack and just cut it up and put it in there, mate. And then you know what I say every time someone hits a patch and it's a big Lamello card, I'm like, oh that that piece of uh, uh, uh fabric from Spotlight w- looks really good in there. <laughs> And it, and it's probably signed from Michael Bridges or whatever. <laughs> like you know what I mean? There's just to have that. Anyone, yeah. honestly, anyone? Like I don't want it to be a shit parade on uh, Panini, but this I just this is like a a public service announcement just for the hobby. I know it's my opinion. People can take my opinion whichever way they want. They can flame me for it, and they can call me a lemon. They can do whatever they want. But honestly, National Treasures this year, it's been. Pretty average the last few years, but this year is hands down Panini's worst product of the year. Worst okay. product. Okay. If anyone says it's a great product, you have got no idea about... Honestly, you have no idea about the hobby. It is the worst... Pro- Impeccable takes a shit on National Treasures, and it's half the price. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. National Treasures in the last few years have been pretty average, to be honest. Um, I think Zion's year is pretty good, but... And and Lucas year was good. Yeah, man, they're all pretty good, but this year's not good. <laughs> Super. Uh, that's what we think. We think yeah, we think it's dreadful. this year's been average, man. Like we've watched quite a few case breaks of it and stuff. And you know, I mean, the value for the case and you know, if you imagine you to buy that whole case yourself, it's just just bananas, stupid money. I mean, you know, you'd pay for a case and you know what you sold your uh dual auto of uh LeBron and and and, and think for 66,000. I mean, that would nearly get you the fucking dual auto, man. <laughs> man, I bought a case of 1819 Lucas here from my local card shop in Perth. Uh, I'll give him a shout. What is um, just cards in Australia? Just the best cards, just, yeah, just the best cards, Justin. Anyway, um, so I paid like I can't remember what it was four and a, it was four or is in between four and five grand Australian for the for the case in a pre order, um, and I fucking howling that I opened that motherfucker because that fucker would be worth some coin right now. But one hundred percent would be. I opened it, but I got a Justin Jackson RPA out of it, so I sort of made my money back on it, but. That's the prices we should be paying for those high end cases. Like, you should be paying four or five grand US for those cases. No more. In my I, I, I completely agree. It's just ridiculous. And even uh, a shitload of money. So, anyway. It's just, it's, 
it's crazy. I mean, you just got you just got to have a look back because yeah, there's 60, 60 guys drafted, and out of every draft class, only two percent become something that are going to end up being hobby relevant. Yeah, and at the end of the day, that's a low. That's a lot of money to gamble on. Yeah, you're you're literally gambling by doing paying these prices. You're gambling so much. Uh, you're actually probably better off taking that money and going to the casino and putting it on red or black. You got more <laughs> chance of of actually winning. Like, you, got better, you got a better chance if you're going to go buy the case, yeah, for example, with that crazy amount of money, just to go try and buy the single. Just put all your money into the, into the single. That's a better option. Instead of yeah. being left with all a bunch of crap when you open all the boxes, just being left with all these cards and to go through the, the, the process of selling them all to lose all your money when you can literally say, oh, well, I lost my... 6,000 USD, but I actually got the card I wanted. A lot of the guys, a lot of the big guys, um, I don't know if you guys follow Breakers Row or, um, oh man, there's a lot, 26 collectibles, all those sort of guys, high end, like even Shine and that, them guys, they, um, I know they used to buy, they still do buy lots of cases, but they will, when when something a product's first released like NT or Flawless or whatever, they put out like like rewards, right? Like, hey, if you can get me this RPA, blah blah blah, I'll pay you this, you know. So they get it quick and early, and they they they're better off paying a large amount for that card than spending, you know, buying ten cases, right? Trying to get it, yeah, fifteen grand a case, right? You know what I mean? So you're better off just giving someone thirty grand straight up, double. You know, you know what I mean? That's like paying for two cases, and then you get that RPA, the one that you're chasing straight away. I completely agree. That's what they I do. Agree. If you got the money, you're laughing. It's the yeah, it's the it's the better move. But like, let's be honest, uh, Shane, it it is the better move now. It's not worth it to buy a whole bunch of cases and crack it open, right? It's yep. yeah, yeah, at five k, yeah, it is right at fifteen. To twenty k a case, yeah. I don't think so, right? So it's better just buy the car. Uh, you, you're spot on there, Dommer. Hundred yeah. percent. Now, yeah. a lot of people have been asking this question regarding fanatics, but because they are taking over, if I was to say to you, Shane, we've got uh, basketball, football, and baseball. You, you can say whichever ones you want, but what products would you like to take from Panini Tops? Uh, it could be Top's product that they did in the past for basketball or football. What would you like them to take across? Would it be Prism, Top's Chrome, to bring that back to basketball? Um, no, it'd have to be one of like them. Like uh, I like, for me personally, I like uh, like the Fleer medals. So and like Fleer retro sort of stuff, right? So like legacies and um, uh, jambalayas and stuff like that. Um, I like that. I like those sort of cards. I like, I do like refractors and that, but yeah, I I really prefer like that Fleer retro, PMGs and stuff like that. Rubies, I like the, that sort of stuff. Would love to get yeah. that back in the in the hobby. That'd be just they are they are there is word that they're they're releasing obviously a, a oh. non licensed style of the PMG and that. What are your thoughts about that? Have you seen that? Have you heard Up about that? Shane? No. Oh. So Upper Deck uh, announced at the National um, that they're bringing back PMG and uh, Jambalaya, Jumbo I believe, as, as yeah. well. But it's all it's obviously all unlicensed, right? So, like, you know, there's going to be MJ, there's going to be LeBron and that, but they're not in Jersey or they're not in... I have, in, I uh, have that, yes. Yeah, I saw that. Yep. Would you, I, I would said you don't waste it? our time. I said don't waste our time. That, that was me. I would collect it. You would? I, I I wouldn't spend huge dollars on it, but I meant like uh, I don't know. I just like anything you can pull a Jordan from. That's very cool. Very cool. Yeah, you can get LeBron and Jordan in there. Tiger Woods. Yeah, and Tiger Woods. See, like that's pretty cool, right? To me, um, especially if there's an auto involved. Yeah. But um, like the bit, yeah, depends. If there was no autos involved and it was just the inserts, you know, I'd still like to 
do it, but I'm not going to pay huge dollars for it. But if there's an auto involved, I'll I'd spend the money. Yep, that's fair. Yeah, uh, a quick one actually, just based on that unlicensed. Um, a lot of people been asking Source and I recently about uh, Leaf. Obviously, Leaf have got a lot of unlicensed stuff, but they've got some crazy cards that they've been releasing. Some one on ones like quad auto cards, back to front quad auto. So there's eight autos on there, uh, you can, ranging from like Ronaldo, Messi, uh, Conor McGregor, Mayweather, all on the same card. Uh, a lot of people said, oh, it's unlicensed, so who cares? But in the end of the day, Source and I said, well, if you're interested in that, that person, in the end, it is their auto. So it might be unlicensed, but it's all authentic stuff. It's not like they're putting fake autos on cards. Yeah. And what you don't get, and all you see is no logo. For example, Messi, it's a bust shot, and you just so, don't see the Barca logo. You see the colors of his top, same with Ronaldo. When it comes to fighters like McGregor and Mayweather, there's no logo to a, like affiliate with those guys. So who really cares? Like it's their auto. So just your your thoughts on it, because Leaf have got some crazy cool products out there, some nice cards out there. I know a lot of people just steer clear, but they asked us the question. And I said, if, if it's something that you want to add to your PC, a nice piece, piece of memorabilia, by all means, if you're interested in that. Yeah, well, they they do. You should see some of their hockey uh, oh, um, patch autos. Oh, like some really filthy patches, like just beautiful. Everyone, look, uh, when you, if you're a patch collector, it's... You want to get a nice, like, you know, multicolored or a bit of a logo sort of patch, right? And these Leaf guys, Leaf, they, I've never owned one. I've never bought one, but I've looked at them and I'm like, damn, I would. I, and then I've had, I, I was, you know, you're scrolling on through eBay and one of them will throw up, come up. And I've had to, like, double check because they've got sort of a national treasure or flawless look to them, some of them. So it's like, oh, what is that? And then you look and it says leaf. So I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm like on the fence about it, right? Because I'm like, yeah, I don't know if this is good or not. But yeah. I know if this is legit and is real, it is awesome because they look awesome. That's my take. That's, that's where we said the same, the exact same thing. Oh, they've got some really nice cards. I just think it's a really cool memorabilia piece. Obviously, do your research into it. Don't go drop in big big dollars if you don't think it's worth that but just do your research and have a look but i think a lot of nice cards a game worn a lot of their stuff i haven't really uh, that is a good question if it's that game very... and they say it is then more than likely they man like they're a company that probably just went out and paid big dollars to go buy these players stuff and then they make touches a... right like Ooh, let's see if we can authenticity of these autographs are guaranteed by Leaf. Uh, this card is safely licensed by the depicted player. This card has not been authorized, endorsed, or approved by any licensing body. It doesn't say anything about like patches. Like I've just got a card up on my screen. It's a it's six autos on the card, <laughs> numbered to three, and it's just like top half of their body look no logos you on need it, to find one with a patch on it and it might say yeah. there with this is a, a this is this, this is this has got six patches in it this card oh, okay all right so it's 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 a six patch six auto card of ronaldo palais messi rooney uh usmane dembele which is probably the the least talented of the lot and then uh ronaldo from brazil so r9 on there so six autos Six patches, numbered to three, and that that thing yeah. I just read was from the um the back of the card. Uh, I know yeah. they've got like a NFL patch auto leaf. Uh, I saw. There we go. We just grabbed this one. It's a Ronald Acuna. There we go. We'll grab a Ronald Acuna MLB. On the back, it says you have received an autograph patch card from Leaf Trading Cards. On the front of this card is an authentic autograph and patch. The authenticity of this autograph and patch are guaranteed by Leaf. We hope you enjoy the piece of history. This doesn't say it's game. It's very vague. It's very yeah. vague. So yeah, very it, vague. look, you never know him. He might. He may have worn that. 
this, it, this, you know, this is what I mean. With, yeah, Shane it, it, was saying tough. though. Like, yeah. let's just have a look at this patch of Acuna. Yeah, look at it. If it lets me, that's filthy. That's a patch. I want to make it bigger, but that's that, right. that's just some of the stuff. Can't you click on the image? Oh, there you go. Authentic itself. signature and player worn patch. It doesn't say if it's game worn. It's player worn. It says up the top here. Yeah, it's doing a it's doing a 2020-21 uh, national treasures. <laughs> Literally. So that's some of the stuff you can get. Uh, some nice cards, honestly. Just typing that in and scrolling down. There's crazy patches, like you said, Shane. Crazy, crazy patches. Yeah, it'd be nice I'll to know like it. game one. Because if they're game one, they're like, that's awesome. I, I've looked I at some it. hockey stuff and I'm like, wow, look at those patches. And that, not for anything, they're listed for a pretty price as well. So. Mm hmm. They must be selling, if you ask me. Anyway, we digress. I think they are. So, anyway, we'll move on. It's good to see that uh, you've come a long way in the last six months in terms of your collecting. You've obviously broadened your, your collection on NHL. You've sold some big cards, which is awesome to hear. But as we always like to ask, uh, an underrated card or product currently in the hobby? Ooh. Nothing out of Panini for sure. We know that. <laughs> that's, that's, hey, as Chuck would say, guaranteed. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah for sure. I um, love it. Um, man, uh, man, you know what? Some Kobe stuff has, um, I think, because uh, he signed so much. Um, some of his stuff is just like really dropped like a lot, um, but undervalued. Ooh, I don't know. Yeah, it could be undervalued. It could be underrated. It could be something that maybe you're looking at that's uh, obviously uh, you you enjoy. I mean, you spoke about your uh, NHL and hockey stuff uh, before. I mean, you might be able to drop possibly uh, another set out of that that you're looking at that's that that interests you. Um, I'm always, mate, I'm just, yeah, I, I'm after Gretzky. That's all about <laughs> it. Um, but yeah, other than that, man, I, to be honest, like, cause the stuff I'm after, none of it's undervalued. <laughs> if anything, it's too overvalued. Yeah. So, like, you know what I mean? I'm like, it's the opposite, but undervalued. I, I think a lot of hockey is still undervalued to be honest. Um, like Gretzky, Gretzky, like if you, oh man, and Upper Deck has some filthy, filthy, uh, patch autos for hockey. Um, and a lot of, a lot of Gretzky stuff, player worn, uh, patch autos are drying up. You look on eBay, there's hardly any, um, and if they're on there, they're for stupid prices, right? Yeah. So, but then if you want to compare in the sports, I know NBA basketball is bigger, but hockey's not. You know, like it's well, it's a, it's a very popular sport in North America and all around the world, the Europe, blah blah blah. Um, Gretzky stuff is still, I think, undervalued. To Definitely. Be. I, I think it's it's one of those big sports that just still hasn't had its moment, if you ask me. Yeah. Well, football, soccer, football has. Yeah. But there's some huge numbers going on there, but that's the world game, right? Um, yeah. I know you boys were happy to see bloody Italy win, eh? Ugh. Anyway, um, I was going for the pommies, but anyway, um, yeah, I know you boys were happy. <laughs> But that that it was good to see because soccer football cars just they're doing well, man. Like it's good to see different areas of their hobby succeeding. Like, you don't want to see any brand go go to shit. You don't. You want everyone to have their little pocket that's really thriving and doing well, and that's just the whole hobby in itself. I, I would never turn around and say, "Oh, I want this this sector of the hobby to start doing shit," and I don't want NFL cards to be something. I love it. It's good. 
yeah, same here. But I would like to see like Panini products, even Prism, everything come lower down in price because it is mass produced and it should be lower um, and it should be more available to younger people that don't have the income and money, right? Because And that's when you have your flawless and your national treasures at a higher price. I understand that. But Prism and, you know, oh, all the other, mate, I can't even list. There's so many. They need to come down in price. I agree. That's what I. That's what I think. That's what. Yeah, I that's think. a that's a fair take, mate. That's a fair take. You know, the, all the select yeah. optic, all of the all of that, man. It's a, it is it is getting up there, and and you know, select. I could understand select as a bit of more of a premium because they didn't uh, release retail, but I mean, this year they're pumping out the retail select. Wow. Uh, it was a hobby exclusive and a first off the line exclusive previously, um, and that now they're cool. pumping out. Yeah, they're pumping out the retail, which is just it's gone nuts. So. Yeah, look, I agree with you on that point, man. Some of that stuff, and I'll be honest with you, my journey being in the hobby, like I got sucked into some of that stuff, but I've sort of drawn back now. And, you know, like I've spoken about this a few times, like a guy that I like out of this year's draft class is uh, Patrick Williams. And I said, you know, stuff the prison, stuff the optic, stuff all that stuff. I just went straight for an on-card auto, number to 25 out of uh, Impeccable. And I really like the design of the card. I think it's, I think it's one of the, better sets that Panini's made over recent years with the brush strokes. I think it looks really good. It's simple. Uh, nothing. They don't overcomplicate it. And the imaging on it is really nice. Um, and I was like, if he actually does come become something like that's going to be worth money, right? Not these, you know, prism silvers and all that shit. I don't understand people going into the whole prism silvers and every prism variant, you know, I could shit and fart and make another prism variant. They just, uh, they just pump them out, mate. It's ridiculous. Rainbows. <laughs> oh man it's just crazy it's crazy anyway thank you so much for your time Shane we really do appreciate it it's the second time you've been on our podcast we look forward to having you on again in the future we love having you on a fellow Aussie slash turn to Canadian now so nah. we get best, the best of both worlds yeah so thank you so much again uh, we'll put all the info for Shane in the description of this podcast so make sure you go over there and check out his collection and uh, drop him a follow so thanks again, mate. Cheers, boys. On behalf of Peace. myself, the great man Sauce, and Shano, keep lo living, loving, and breathing sports, double coverage, and peace. Later. Thank you for tuning in. Please don't forget to leave a review on the Apple Podcasting app. Also, follow us on socials, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. Talking old spots, double curve.